unlike some of the other European movements we've talked about in this class, realism has an American counterpart. Some art historians say that this is all one and the same movement, we should all call it part of the realist movement in both Europe and America, while other art historians argue that the American movement is slightly separate, and they often use the term American naturalism to define this movement. For our purposes, that argument isn't that important. You should just know that realism and American naturalism are very closely related if you hear those two terms. One of the most well-known proponents of American naturalism is Thomas Aikens. You might have heard his name along with Winslow Homer as kind of famous 19th century American painters, and Homer is also a good example of this kind of American naturalism. Aikens one of his most famous works is the Gross Clinic, which I also used in the earlier video to talk about realism versus naturalism. And this shows the medical clinic or the medical school of Dr. Thomas Gross. So this gross here is not an adjective, it's a person's name. And Dr. Gross was a famous surgeon in mid to late 19th century America. He taught at the what was then the Jefferson Medical College. And Aikens also taught there. He taught anatomy to students there, in addition to teaching at the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts. And he painted this picture, intending it for an exhibition to celebrate the American centennial in 1876. Unfortunately for Aikens, this picture was rejected from the centennial due to being too graphic. But it was eventually purchased by the Jefferson Medical College, which eventually became part of the medical school at Penn, who actually still owns this painting. And what we see here is the latest in scientific and medical technology. So we see Dr. Gross lecturing. If we look in the top half or so of this image, we can see the medical students. And this used to be how you went to medical school. You sat in a big lecture hall and watched procedures being done. But we also see many other new innovations. So if we look at this man right here, where my cursor is, um, he's actually administering anesthesia to the patients. And this seems not that innovative to us. Again, thankfully, we can use, in a, we can use anesthesia in routine surgeries. Um, and we can safely have those surgeries. But in 1875, anesthesia was a fairly new invention. And it was even newer being used in America. Euro the Europeans in adopted the use of anesthesia about 10 years before American doctors began to kind of catch up to that curve. And to our eyes, this painting is somewhat graphic. The, the patient is having an operation on his thigh. He's on his side, and we can see his buttocks and his leg. The woman here with her hand over her eyes is his mother. So again, not exactly what we would think of as, as a kind of clean surgical field today. And she is kind of so overcome by this that she does have to cover her eyes. But this is not meant to be gross or gruesome. It is meant to show these new innovative ideas of America in the late 19th century. Another American naturalist is Henry Ossowa Tanner. And Tanner was actually one of Thomas Aiken's students. Um, Tanner was the son of sharecroppers and former slaves. And he was one of the few African-American students to study art in the late 19th century. Uh, Thomas Aikens, who was his teacher, actually encouraged both women and African-American students to study art, although that idea was extremely unpopular at the time. And Tanner had grown up with a father who was a preacher. And he'd spent much of his childhood traveling around and visiting his father's congregation. And often his, the subject matter of his paintings reflect that experience. It reflects the life of po often poor southern blacks. So in pictures like The Thankful Poor, we see the old man and the boy, and they have very, very little. You know, we have just basically a tiny loaf of bread and maybe a mug of coffee to eat, 
And yet they still take a moment to pause and to give thanks for the things that they do have. One thing you might notice here is that, like Edward Manet, Tanner has a strong Impressionist influence on his work. Unfortunately, after his time with Aikens at the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts, he can't really make a career for himself. He finds that America is not really interested in the work of an African-American artist. So he does go to Paris, where, although not entirely equal, there are more opportunities for black people and black artists. And while he's there, he is exposed to the work of the Impressionists. And his later work in the 1880s and 1890s does reflect that more visible, textured look that we often associate with Impressionist paintings. <laughs> 